Welcome to Black Wealth Weekly Podcast, where you can find different guests being interviewed by me, Shanique Nicole, the Millennial Money Maven, every single week where we will be breaking down how they got into their respective industries and are creating wealth for their families. You don't want to miss an episode, so hit the bell and tune in. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Black Wealth Weekly. I'm your host, Shaniqua Nicole, and I hope to see you next week. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on them notifications, and head to blackwealthweekly.com where you can read all the new episodes of these entrepreneurs and so many others. Sound? Mic, mic. Mike, 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 check, Mike. Mike, check, Invest Fest. So, yeah, trying to get my name on the building, trying to become bi coastal, so trying to get a place in Atlanta so I can be out here even more often than I already am out here. Right. And just level up. I came here and I'm just way more inspired now after coming here, talking to a lot of really good people about multifamily. A lot of people own over 100 units. I'm like, I got to get back on my unit Real grind. Estate, so, yeah, on your doors. Yeah. Got you. What's going on, family? Your girl, Shanique Nicole, the Millennial Money Maven here at the 2023 Invest Fest with Black Wealth Weekly Magazine. King Billy just pulled up on me again. What's going on, Todd Billionaire? Todd Billy at, real Todd Billion at Todd Capital. We're here. I love your setup. You did it even better than you did last year. Well, you know. Last year was super fun. I didn't know what I was walking into. You know. And I walked around the corner. I was like, she, she leveled up even more. <laughs> so it's always good to see you. people winning. Yes, yes, yes. Tell the people who you are and what you do. So, Charles Oglesby, also this top millionaire, created a company called Tide Capital in 2016. We started out with a podcast, turned it into an investment club for stocks, then turned it into an investment club for real estate. Then we started creating educational courses and content. And in 2020, the course went viral, did crazy numbers, changed a whole bunch of lives. And from that, I've just been able to kind of like chill, retire for a little bit. And now I'm back on my grind now. So 2023, I'm back, and I'm back on the 10X, and we're trying to get our name on a building now. Trying to get your name on a building. Going to get our name on a building. Getting your name on a building. Right. In the process. Right. What you mean by that? Well, I mean, basically, I got to do bigger stuff. Yeah. So I've been able to grow a really good brand online, but I want to make it even more real. So one of the things that changed for me recently is I have a law degree, and for a while, I didn't have my license because... I was having some issues with California and just passing the damn bar. But they realized <laughs> that their bar pass rate was too high. It's like a 33% pass rate. And so recently they just released some information saying that based on my prior test scores, I actually qualify to be an attorney. Wow. All I got to do is do like 300 hours of like Continue already ahead. attorney work that's like supervised attorney work. Okay. And then I can do that. So the goal is to combine Todd Capital with Todd Law and then really just like start bringing in financial advisory services, wealth management services, and all the stuff I've been doing online, but just take it even higher. Ooh. So commercial real estate, get our own building, put our name on the building, and just put the whole culture on. Black attorneys, black law firm, black financial advisors, black financial advisory firm, and just make it even more efficient. So we're chasing bees right now. I love it. So yeah. what is it going to say on the building, Todd? It's probably going to say like Todd Cap. Todd, Todd Cap. Capital. Okay, I love yeah. it, I love it. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> Where are you, where you going to be headquartered, California or Atlanta? I, I, like I said, I'm going to be bi-coastal. So I want to have a location in California and a location in Atlanta. Okay, gotcha. I love that. Wow. You've, all, you've said so much. You've said so much. So I don't even know which way we, I want to go with this. But I guess let's take it back to the beginning. So you said that you started with the investment club. Right. Are you guys still investing? You still doing real estate? So interestingly enough, we were using a software program that was managing the stocks. And then in COVID, they liquidated and they went out of business. Ooh. And so we kind of just What did that ended, mean for you guys? We kind of just like let everything go. Okay. So everybody got cut checks. Everybody got docs and all that stuff for taxes. And we just ended the, the stock side of the investment club. We still have the real estate side of the investment club, but it's a little bit kind of like, we're not doing it as much and yeah. as heavy anymore because I started kind of focusing on my own stuff. Right. And just, I learned I'd rather educate people and help them do it themselves than me try to be wrangling all these cats and wrangling all. all these things together. It's just too much stress. It's too much pressure. Yeah. It's too much documents and paperwork. <laughs> I'd rather just like give them the information. I can help way more people that way. I can help people across the country 
everybody not, might not want to invest where we're investing, but they can still use that same information to invest where they want to invest with their own group. Right. And so I learned that I can have a greater impact just teaching people as opposed to like keeping the information inside of me and say, you got to come to me if you want to work with me no and know what I know. No over here. Right. So <laughs> it ended up being a blessing. So if somebody wanted to start an investment club, do they need to be licensed? Like, what does that look like? So an investment club, you don't necessarily have to be licensed per se. I would say that what you want to do is work with your friends and your family. Your friends and your family, come to them, say, hey, let's meet together once a month. Let's create an LLC. Let's make sure we have all our documents, all of that stuff taken care of. Right. And let's start just pulling our money together and buying stuff. Now, if you're trying to go out there and market to the world, now you're stepping into something that's not even an investment club. It's a little bit different. It's like a fund right. or that kind of stuff. And so I would say investment club, keep it friends and family. And you can do a lot just with that group of people. Right. You have all these people with not only combined income, combined resources, but also combined credit scores. You got people who can sign on that loan. And now you got two, three, four, five people that are trying to buy that apartment complex that are backing that LLC as opposed to like one person going out there right. or one person in their credit and their down payment and all that stuff. Yeah. And so I always tell people that business and investing are team sports. So that doesn't mean that you got to go to the internet to build your team when you got a family right there. Everybody might not get it, but usually they don't get it in the beginning phase. Once they see that it's real, right. then they get it. So it's your job to show them that it's real. Right. They're going to eventually get on board. Yeah. They might not get on board in year zero, but they're going to get on board in year 2.5 but the cool thing is, is, we got a generation to build generational wealth. Right. We're all trying to build generational wealth in year one. But let's just make a 20 year plan. Let's make a 20 year family plan and say, all right, it's going to take us two and a half years to get them on board. But once they get on board, right. what can we do then for the next 17 and a half years? Ooh, that's so powerful. <laughs> I love it. That's so powerful because, I mean, even when it comes to entrepreneurship, you know, people think they're going to come, they, they go and work a job for 10 years with no thought about it, right? No, you know, oh, no, this is too long or this is too hard. Right. But you start entrepreneurship, maybe you win, maybe you lose in year one or two, and right. you now think you're a failure. Right. You know, you're only a failure when you stop, right. when you give up. Um, so I, th th that's key, you know, to look at the 20 year vision. I do think that's something that we need to do better with as a people. Um, having vision beyond year one, year five next month you know yep. awesome so um well i guess we're looking forward to todd law right that todd law todd cap todd law man <laughs> no what's funny is when i first got out of law school i interned at this company and it was um it was a law firm in orange county and half of his firm was a law firm and the other half was an investment firm and i always had this idea in my mind like i want that for myself right and I didn't even realize that I was walking into something I had a vision for like five, six years ago. Like wow. it's really going to happen. Yeah. So God already will got set Todd it up. Built up. Now he's got to build Todd Law and I'm making some really good connections with some black attorneys. And it's going to happen. I'm going to have my whole floor. Firm. There Law we go. Law firm. Law firm investment firm. Management firm. firm. I love it. I love Hedge it. Hedge all that stuff. Hedge fund, all that stuff. Well, you have the proof. <laughs> right? You've been doing the work for the last probably two decades. How yeah. long? How long you been in wealth management and doing so law? So I graduated from, I graduated college in 2019. We're in 2023. After I got out of college, I was a financial advisor with uh, Edward Jones. After that, I became a private client banker with uh, Chase Private Client. And then I went and started working for a family office, which we managed over 200 million in assets. Wow. And so I've been doing this for about 13, 14 years. Gotcha. So the family office, was that for one, like, was that for one family? They had $200 million in family wealth? So one very wealthy Talk individual. Talk to me about that. What he did is he, um, he was an accountant and then somebody came to them and they said, hey, do you want to buy my business? And he was like, I don't know anything about buying a business. And so what he did was, he realized that the business was already being run by like his head like server. It was a restaurant. And so he bought it, it was essentially passive, and he started buying a bunch of them and just rolling them up, rolling them up. And essentially what he did is, after he owned a bunch of them, he sold them all to Coco's. Wow. And so his exit made him worth 200 mil. Mm. So sometimes you gotta build something just to sell it. Right. And that sale is gonna make you wealthy. And so we've been seeing that a lot. And a lot of times we have that, that debate like, 
should black people sell their business? Well, it depends on what you're going to do with that wealth once you get it. Right. Are you going to turn it into a family office or are you going to just start eating off of it? Yeah. And so what he did is he made that exit, created a family office, and now they start investing that money and putting it into other deals. So a lot of people might not know what a family office is. We've been in the wealth management space, so I understand. But tell, tell, tell the people what, what actually is a family office and what does it do for you well? So a family office, I think there's layers to it and levels to it because on one hand, of course, you're managing your wealth. But on the other hand, you're also putting your family to work. And so what was cool about this office is it was the father who ran the office and then the son had an office within the office. He had his own construction company. And so the dad was like financing the construction company. The son's out there making money in the construction company. The wives don't work. But then guess what their kids are going to do? Their kids all went to school to get degrees and things that can help the family business. Law. Like, so law, finance, right. MBAs, that kind of stuff. Right. And so it's kind of a way for you to manage that family portfolio and make sure that the wealth doesn't just get spent. Right. Even if you're still giving people money to spend because they're working for the family's business. Right. And so I think that it really is just like a hedge fund or a wealth management fund for your family. Right. So essentially the family hires lawyers, Hires right. business consultants, in-house attorneys, in-house managers, yep. in-house investment advisors to come in. In-house deal finders. Right, right. So they come in, they manage your wealth, right. and you know, kind of keep the family in check. Right. right. <laughs> because because they're paid on your payroll mm -hmm. as as being a part of the employees in the uh, in the in the family office. So I love that. That's a gem for y'all. Make sure y'all go and research family office because once we worth two hundred million. We need people to, to, to manage and do, you know, do the work for our wealth. 100%. What's your goal? I know you say Todd Billy. I'm sure the vision has expanded beyond one billion. The funny thing is goals are it's so broad. Like, I have goals being a father. I have goals being a husband. Did I that? have goals um, how is, how, How's being a father for you? Being a father is the most amazing thing ever. I love it. I, you never even know that you can love something so much. Aww. Like, I look at him and I see me, but I also see like a blank canvas. Something that I can just impart so much information and wisdom and resources. Like, the money is not even really a factor. It's just the fact that at three years old, I can be teaching him about all the things that I waited to learn at 30, 35. The connections that I have, the people that I know are now his connections. People know my son just like they know me. Right. And so I knew what I wanted. And I had to work and grind for a lot of those things. And now I can give that to him at an early age, but also instill the mindset of him to take advantage of those things. Right. I don't want him to just take it for granted and to not appreciate it. Right. I want him to say, like, man, I really appreciate where I'm at. I can take this even further. And so I think that it kind of gives you like a second chance. It gives you this blank canvas. And it also gives your life more purpose. Because quite honestly, I would say my life became bigger once I had him. And when my life became bigger for him, my life became bigger for everybody. Wow. And so I had to become a bigger person for the culture just because I had a son that I was trying to show what it looks like to be a man, what it looks like to be a father, what it looks like to be a business person, what it looks like to put on for the culture and add value to the culture. And so I didn't expect any of that. I just expected like, you know what they tell you when you have kids, like it's gonna cost you a lot of money, it's gonna be a lot of work. <laughs> but I was like, what about all these blessings that I got That's as a result of that? <laughs> all these blessings. So I, I wouldn't trade it for anything else. Oh, right, right. No, I hear you. And, you know, I'm a mom, two boys, boy mom. I love being a mom. I do think moms play a different role, right? right. Moms, I feel, are more sacrificing. So I would jokingly say, like, well, I tell younger people, just wait. Wait to have kids so that you're not sacrificing too early because you need to use those years when you're younger and have the energy, have the aspirations to build so that when you do have kids, you can go to football practice and you can do the things, right? When I was a kid, nobody was around for me to go to dance class. I had to go with my friend's parents. Um, you know, so definitely blessed to be able to do the things that I want to do in my life and, you know, and pass that down to the kids as well. So I love it. That's beautiful. Ah, oh, the growth. We're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> we just getting better. We just getting better. But I would say you're 100% right on that. I think the reason why I'm able to father the way that I father 
is because I waited so long. Yeah. I didn't have my first child until I was 33. Okay. And so. Your Jesus here. So, <laughs> I didn't have my first child until I was 33. I didn't. I didn't get married until I was 30. So I never feel like I'm missing out on anything because I've done it all. Right. Re responsibly. <laughs> I've done it all. <laughs> and so I can appreciate the stage of my life right now. Right. I'm like, all right, this is where we're at. It's not like, man, I could be in the streets. It's like, I don't want the streets. I went home last night in Atlanta on like a trip and I was like, I'm going to sleep. Could have could have been anywhere. I could have been anywhere. Me too. Yeah. I went home. Because <laughs> we got to work. It's about the work. It's about the work, being here, you know, to spread the love with the people. I love it. Let the people know what they can expect from you soon, where they can follow you, how we can tap into what you have going on. So what's coming next is Todd Capital, Todd Law. That's what's coming. Oh, did you get it? Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what's coming next is Todd Capital, Todd Law, and we're going to 10X it. We're going to be omnipresent. You're going to see us everywhere. We're going to be adding value. We're going to be giving to the community and to the culture just to kind of continue to grow what we got going on. I love what I'm seeing right now. I feel like we all had a part to play in making this happen. On your leisure, they put it together, but us showing up. So